is on a shooting rampage. Go to GretaWire.com to blog. It's put an open thread. You can blog about this horrible event. O'Reilly Factor's next. The O'Reilly Factor is on tonight. The guy looked like the guy had a semi-automatic pistol. And he went in. He just started firing. 7825. Check into my core. Just doesn't make any sense. Oh, my God. Outrage in Arizona. 19 people shot, including Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. And now, political violence has broken out. These sorts of things, I think, invite the kind of toxic uh, rhetoric that can lead unstable people to believe this is an acceptable response. So many outlets uh, have the intent of inciting, of inciting people to opposition, to anger. There was a, a lot of vitriolic statements made on radio and TV about her support of health care. We'll have wall-to-wall -wall coverage featuring Britt Hume, Bernie Goldberg, Juan Williams, Mary Catherine Hamm, Carl Cameron, and James Rosen. Caution, you are about to enter the no-spin zone. The factor begins right now. Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Murder in Arizona and the gross exploitation of it. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. The attack on Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords in Arizona was an attack on every law-abiding American citizen. The man who shot the Congresswoman murdered a federal judge and five other people, including a nine-year-old girl, has damaged our republic far beyond the taking of human lives. If politicians cannot walk freely to talk with their constituents, we don't have a democracy. Talking Points believes that any new laws that provide greater safety for public officials should be considered. We simply cannot have chaos at this level. The killer, Jared Loeffner, is a psychopath. Civilization has always had them and always will. There is no solution to the likes of Loeffner. Besides the senseless violence, there is another disgusting display sweeping America, and that is the exploitation of the murders by political zealots. Only moments, moments after Congresswoman Giffords was shot, some far-left loons began to spew their hatred. Conservatives encouraged Loftner to pull the trigger. Sarah Palin, Michelle Bachman, Fox News all spurred the psychopath to kill the six people. The merchants of hate who are peddling this stuff should be accountable. So let's begin with the New York Times. In an editorial today, that far-left newspaper said, quote, it is legitimate to hold Republicans, and particularly their most virulent supporters, in the media, responsible for the gale of anger that has produced the vast majority of these death threats. Many on the right have exploited the arguments of division, reaping political power by demonizing immigrants or welfare recipients or bureaucrats, unquote. That is flat out reprehensible, and every American should condemn that New York Times editorial. Republicans had nothing to do with these murders in Arizona. If you oppose a porous border, you are not demonizing immigrants. If you oppose a nanny state, you are not demonizing welfare recipients. The New York Times does this all day long. If you would disagree with their far left view, you are hateful. Even worse, even worse, is Times columnist Paul Krugman, a radical left Princeton professor. Krugman accuses Congresswoman Michelle Bachman of inciting hatred towards Ms. Giffords because Ms. Bachman said this. I want people in Minnesota armed and dangerous on this issue of the energy tax because we need to fight back. Thomas Jefferson told us having a revolution every now and then is a good thing, and the people, we the people are going to have to fight back hard if we're not going to lose our country. Obviously, Ms. Bachman was using a metaphor to make a political point. It is simply morally repugnant and libelous that Krugman would smear Ms. Bachman by connecting her to the murders. Incredibly, Krugman continues, quote, but you won't hear on MSNBC jokes about shooting government officials or beheading a journalist at the Washington Post. Listen to Glenn Beck or Bill O'Reilly, and you will, unquote. As usual, Mr. Krugman is lying. The man is simply incapable of telling the truth. Here's the proof. 
You guys see Live and Let Die, the great Bond film with, with uh, Yafit Koto as the bad guy, Mr. Big. Uh, I, it, in the end, they jammed a big CO2 pellet in his face and he blew up. I have to tell you, Rush Limbaugh is beginning to look more and more like Mr. Big. And at some point, somebody's going to jam a CO2 pellet into his head and he's going to explode like a giant blimp. That day may come. Now, Mr. Matthews wasn't threatening Mr. Limbaugh. He was making a political point. Compared to the other people on MSNBC, Matthews is St. Paul. To its disgrace, NBC News allows vicious personal attacks on anyone who doesn't tow the far-left MSNBC line. The hatred spewed on that cable network is unprecedented in the media. And then there's Sarah Palin. She's being blamed for the murders as well. Giffords was one of 20 Democrats whose districts were lit up in crosshairs on a Sarah Palin campaign website last spring. Giffords and many others complained that someone unstable might act on that imagery. As everybody knows, Governor Palin was very active in last November's election, and using words like targeting certain districts is common political usage. In fact, Fox News correspondent James Rosen reports that the Democratic Leadership Committee has used almost the exact same imagery as Governor Palin in assessing campaigns. I guess Paul Krugman didn't see this bit of campaigning by West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin. I'll take on Washington and this administration to get the federal government off of our backs and out of our pockets. I'll cut federal spending and I'll repeal the bad parts of Obamacare. I sued EPA, and I'll take dead aim at the cap-and-trade bill. And the hits just keep on coming. After condemning the violence, the far-left women's organization now opined, quote, we condemn equally, equally the culture of hate and violence increasingly reflected in extreme right-wing opponents of those who support progressive solutions to our country's challenges, unquote. They condemn equally now equating mass murder with rhetoric? Unbelievable. And somehow now does not condemn the Daily Coast or the hate-filled diatribes on MSNBC. No, they're perfectly fine. It's just the right wing. That's the problem. The hypocrisies are stunning, but they pale, pale, beside the exploitation of these terrible murders in Arizona. Decent people simply do not ascribe motivation to a psychopath like Lofner unless that motivation is proven beyond a reasonable doubt. I can't tell you how angry this makes me. Far-left loons have attacked me in vile ways for years. I have to have security around the clock. Has the New York Times ever said a word about that? Some of my colleagues here at Fox News and on talk radio are faced with the exact same situation. There comes a point in a free society when citizens have to acknowledge the truth or see their country dissipate. The New York Times, MSNBC, Paul Krugman and others are furious that their far left vision is falling apart. So they are using a terrible tragedy, using it to attack their perceived political enemies. That's what this is all about. The failure of the far left agenda because the loons are furious they are now accusing people of being accessories to murder. How despicable is that? President Obama struck exactly the right tone on Saturday when he said this. It's not surprising that today Gabby was doing what she always does, listening to the hopes and concerns of her neighbors. That is the essence of what our democracy is all about. Uh, that is why this is more than a tragedy for those involved. It is a tragedy for Arizona and a tragedy for our entire country. What Americans do at times of tragedy is to come together and support each other. Well, that is good leadership from Mr. Obama. Unfortunately, it's not happening. Also, I would like to see the president call out the far-left thugs who are exploiting these murders, who are so full of hatred that they can't even allow people to grieve before turning the tragedy into a political circus. One final note. There is hatred on the right as well. There is over-the-top rhetoric. And these murders in Arizona should remind conservatives that there are boundaries, lines that should not be crossed. Hate is hate. It doesn't matter where it comes from. And that's a memo. Now, the rest of the factor this evening will be devoted to the story. Britt Hume, Juan Williams, Mary Catherine Hamm, Bernie Goldberg, and our correspondents will all weigh in. 
We'll be right back with Juan and Mary Kath.